Hello, this one is gonna be a long one, but it's because I included Frost Strike called Critical Maximized, Physical Critical Maximized Builds. So you're gonna find your answer in here. So without further ado, let's get into it. Early game skill board should look something like this. So on Frost Strike, we want to have additional call damage, quick attack, confidence, area effect, fine weakness. And the six link, the best would be Warrior Shadow as soon as you can. Because this one, you're not gonna change for quite some time. If you don't have Warrior Shadow, you can use Slaughter, which is green, or use Iron Will, which is red. But aim for Warrior Shadow as soon as you can. On Offensive Seal, you want to have Seal of Condense Elements or Seal of Critical Chance. Both are working good. For Defense Seal, we can do Seal of Dodge, Seal of Armor, Seal of Case Resist, whatever you need the most. Illusion Axes are to extract energies, and you don't want, you want to keep your extract energy normal. Do not add any colors to it, do not make it blue. You want to keep it normal and as high level as you can. Because whenever you add a color to it, it gives you a chance to gain random energy. And we do not want random energies. At the same time, Condense Elements, Illusion Axe, and Seal, Seal of Dodge should be linked with Damp and Resource Cost to maintain your mana e easier. After that, for movement abilities, Leap Attack, Roll, together with Disarm, is the best ones you can do early. After that, this is basically the starter one. After that, you can start working towards your Fighter's Wrath, which is Attack Enhance. You want to have Time Acceleration, Increased Duration, and Enhance Effect on your Fighter's Wrath. For Defense Enhance, Bulwark Protection with Time Acceleration and Increased Duration. This is a really nice one, because right now, when you have to purify Ancient Monsters, you can press this, and at least you're not gonna die. After that, you can start working towards your Shadow Provocation. Shadow Provocation is not here for the damage, it's for the arm amplification. On Shadow Provocation, you want to have Enhanced Effect, Increased Duration, Lingering Shout, Hushed Shout, and Predator's Roar. This one is nice, it debuffs the enemies and amplifies your damage basically. And the last one is Buff Activation when hit, so you wouldn't need to press it yourself. Whenever you have this link, it's gonna activate your Shadow pro Provocation automatically. Another one, but it's not necessarily early, is Shadow of Justice. This one removes any CC, any hard CC. It's really nice later into the game, and you want to have it together with buff activation upon crowd control. So it would remove your crowd control automatically. Zodiacs for the cold build looks like this. You want Afros, Swamp, Jewel, Leaf. In here, you can pick up movement speed if you want to, but resource cost dampening is also a good choice. In here, you want Twisted Elements. This is the main one, because it's status effect rate. Do not forget to pick up Elaborate Attack. Super Speed. Hands quicker than light into muscle strength explosion. Annihilation. Desertification and thirst for elements. Fighting spirit and wiper. If your stats are 200 and more, you can pick up Palm of Harmony. Do not forget to pick up Cold Gaze, it's more freeze and 10% damage jump against frozen enemies, which is a lot of damage, only for 5 points. Display of Lightning, this one is before you craft your weapon with additional lightning damage on hit. Strongville is my go-to choice in hardcore mode, just decreases critical damage. I spent 5 points in here for potion duration and potion effect because potions right now is really easy to get and it gives you plenty of damage and at the same time you can you can use zodiac stone in here. 
After those, remember that you can spend specialization points much earlier than I'm showing you. I just don't want to make it confusing. So I keep Zodiac points for later, but Zodiac points for specializations open up at 22 points, 45 and 70. So you, we want to use Dawn spec, and in here we want to go for overpower, uplift, and then into powerful hit. And when you unlock two extra points in Saluto from the green quest, you can pick up on Earth Mana. But remember, For Alex, you want to start with Sebda, pick up Chaos Resist, and on Active Skill, you want Mental Stimulation, together with Cooldown Recovery Speed, and Increase Buff Effect. For the second one, you can go Castor. On that one, you want to pick up uh, Enhanced Range, so basically Extra Area Effect. Or you can pick up uh, Sanctum Effect, which, is, which buffs you on the maps. For the third one, you want to go for Aquila and pick up Cold Pen and some Cold Flat Damage with Cold Multiplier. And for the last one, you can go Boreal because it's only gonna be 15 levels. And you can only do Enhanced HP, so extra HP flat. For Cold Frost Strike on the champs, you can go Alyssa, Boreal, Caster, Mercedes, 140s. On the champs themselves, you want to pick up Critical Rate, Critical Damage, at least. And then on the third affix, you can pick up Maximize Damage, HPs, Just Damage Multipliers, whatever you can get. On the Legendary Prefix, you want Strike Damage Amplification or Maximization Chance. Crit Damage also works if, if you can get it. Later into the game for the Cold Frost Strike, skill board should look something like this. So on Frost Strike, you want Source Awakening for that Cold Explosion. Warrior Shadow, you can go Source Awakening and pick up uh, Damage Amplification and Area Effect. Iron Will, Origin Awakening, Fighting Spirit, Source Awakening. Area Effect for Origin Awakening. Focused Strike, you want to awaken it to Source. And quick attack. You want to awaken it to extra attack speed or resource cost. However, you don't have to use quick attack if you already have five attack speed. You can switch quick attack into something like melee damage amplification. But remember that you want to awaken your melee damage amplification to can inflict dot before you equip it. At the same time, Focus Strike is also here for the speed. If you don't need it, you can change Focus Strike into something like Grip Strength, depending on whether you are using two-hander or one-hander. I would highly suggest to use Grip Strength if you're using one-hander. It's a, it's a strong damage amp. If you have enough area effect, Instead of using area effect, you can use concentrated area effect, which is gonna be huge damage amp, but much less area effect. That out of the way, another change that I did, I added seal of striking. Because the later you go into the game, strike damage amp becomes better than just elemental damage multiplier. Veil of protection is here for defense. And you want to use Wine Veil, because Wine Veil decreases projectile damage taken, and it's the only source to decrease projectile damage taken. At the same time, I added Counter Attack to extract an extra physical energies, and Counter Attack scales with area effect, so right now it's really good, plus extra dodge rate. On Illusion Axis, I added Center of Gravity. Center of Gravity with the Verity Awakening, increases your um, damage multiplier, but only even it's Verity. If it's gonna be non-awakened to Verity, it's only gonna increase your damage when you stand still. 
With Verity Awakening, it increases your damage whenever you are moving, and you are moving a lot. At the same time, I added Sprint with his arm and Pen Slash with Momentum. Momentum is just damage decrease whenever you're fighting a boss. Pen Slash, if you're using Shield, you can use Shield Charge. Shield Charge is also a good option. For Fighter's Wrath, I added Decrease Duration. Decrease Duration is big damage increase, but you need to be careful. And you need to test your DPS whenever you do this because you need some authority crafts in order to push your fighter's run duration. Otherwise, you're gonna lose so much duration that that skill rune effect is not gonna do much. I added totem activation upon using enhanced skill and it's of course weakened totem, awaken it to source. I switched shout of justice position to benefit from hushed shout and enhance effect. So it would be on a lower cooldown and you could remove more hard CCs. I left three open spots in here, but those spots can be easily occupied depending on how much you advance in the game. This way, this skill board basically should be achievable for everyone. In here, in the free spots, you could add something like Agribant's Thunderbolt. But that thing requires some specific setup, so I left it out. But you can definitely fill this space easily. For maximize build, you need to do three things. So you want to add smash, awaken it, it to source for smash effect, add persistence, awaken it to Verity for strike damage and per red link, or you can do origin depending on how much triple maximize damage you have. And add seal of persistence as attack seal and awaken it to Verity. And I converted counter attack to cold damage because when you're doing maximize damage, cold energy is really nice. And that would be all the changes you need to do for the Maximize damage on the skill board. For maximize damage on the zodiacs, you want to do these changes. So basically, pick up distorted senses instead of elaborate attack. On your second spec, you want to pick up sleet and elemental penetration. And you are done. There is no changes that you need to do after that. For called maximized, on the charms you want Fox 140, so Alyssa Boreal Castor Mercetti. You can also do 230, 230, 190. And on the charms themselves, again, same stuff. Damage, damage multiplier, maximize damage multiplier, or just some HPs, chance to deal double maximized. And on the leggy, strike damage jump, and of course, maximization chance if you can get it. For physical frost strike, you only need to do two changes. So basically pick up convert physical damage link. You can change any link. I changed the uh, iron will, but at the same time you can change quick attack or focus at strike. Any of those are changeable depending whatever you need more attack speed or you need more damage jump from the iron will. After that, on your weekend totem, you want to awaken it to origin cause source doesn't work. Every other part of the skill board is exactly the same. You don't need to do any changes. For physical frost strike on the zodiacs, I'm only gonna show the changes. So the first one is forest, another one is root for physical distortion, Another one is in Spider. Instead of going cold damage, you want to pick up physical damage, confirm kill for damage jump against stunned enemies. In trade seven, instead of going thirst for elements, you want to pick up raging particles. And the biggest changes are into spec. You want, you need to change the spec. You need to go for hammer, powerful hit and area. For rat, you want to go damage jump and desperate hit. In this one, HP of someone hit. You want to start with this one, damage amp and area amp. For physical build, for the relics, you want to go caster, pick up sensory simulation with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. And on the passive side, you want to pick up 
area effect enhanced range. For the second one, you want to go speaker. For the passive, powerful damage. For the third one, you can go Sabda, defensive choice for chaos resist. And the last one, of course, you can only do Boreal for some extra HP. For the charms on the physical critical build, you want to go Alyssa, Hamal, Boreal, Castor 140s and pick up critical rate, critical damage at least. And on the third affix, you can go maximize damage, damage or HP, depending on whatever charms you can get. And on the legendary prefix, we want to go critical damage, strike damage amp, or maximization chance. Maximization chance is the best one. For maximized physical on the skill board, you only want to add persistence, smash, and then seal of persistence, and convert our counter attack to call damage, and you are done on the skill board. For maximized physical zodiacs, you need to do the same changes, pick up distorted senses, and in here, pick up turbulence instead of desperate hit, and you are left with two extra points, because there is no reason to spend nine points into our second spec, and those two points you can spec however you like. You can remove power of harmony and just pick up will of the strong if you have 500 strength. If you can do that, another easy way to spend those is just to add two extra points on the rainbow and pick up some attack speed and stats. For physical maximize charms, you want to go Alyssa Hamal Boreal. For charms themselves, you're looking for damage multiplier, maximize damage on the suffix. And the third affix can be HP or chance to deal double maximize damage. On the legendary prefix, what you're looking for is strike damage amplification or maximization chance. For early itemization, I have a guide, so I'm not gonna talk about it again. I'm gonna link it in the description, but I want to mention two unique items. So basically, both are gonna be rings. So one ring is Caster Refraction Ring. This one, if you're doing a critical build, because it gives you flat critical rate. This, this one is used basically on every single critical build and it's really strong ring, even TF-83, you don't need TF-84. And for maximize build, what you want to get is Band of Certainty. As it basically makes your do maximize damage every two strikes and triple maximize damage every three strikes. So this ring is really strong for maximize builds. Another one is neck, but neck is hero charm. It basically gives you more frost strike range and a little bit of stats. It's not necessary to have this one for the frost strike to work, but it's a nice damage necklace if you can have it. Let's talk about some leaderboards and what people can achieve with Frost Strike. In my build guides, I'm more focusing on earlier game and I'm trying always to make a simply a build so everybody could achieve it. But if you start inspecting some people, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. And I keep seeing that more often, especially in my Twitch chat or in YouTube comments. People start following rank 1 guys without realizing what they're picking up and most of the times when they pick something it doesn't actually work because they do not have a proper crafts or proper unique items. But I want to inspect this guy to talk a little bit more on what is achievable and what you can do. This guy is doing maximize build and he does some of the interesting things in here. Of course he has so many good uniques. For most of the players, this is not achievable. I can tell you that right now. And this guy is always rank one in every single season. This guy is a really good player. And most likely, he is not spending any money in game. He is just making so many rubies just by selling bases. Because on the first two, three days, he's already doing max level maps. And he's making a lot of rubies just by selling the high level bases. But first of all, that I didn't talk in my video, in my bell guides is Thun Transcended Icabon's Thunderbolt. And this basically enables you to use a Thunderbolt, which is a toggle. 
And why is it so good? Because it has a global damage amplification against shock damage enemies. So basically with these shoulders, you apply shock already and at the same time you increase all of your damage dealt to shock enemies. This is really nice shoulders. It's absolutely offensive shoulders by the way. At the same time, it buffs your Thunderbolt. Your Thunderbolt becomes really big. So it's just an easy damage upgrade if you have the shoulders. Another one, he is using Rapid Seal. I don't talk about Rapid Seals in my build guides, just because you need extra space, extra action bar space, and that extra action bar space actually costs you some Rune Mastery levels. And I don't know how many people are actually grinding Rune Mastery levels. It's not as expensive as Season 4, but yeah, most likely, if you add something like Rapid Seal, you're gonna need one open action bar slot from for the Rune Mastery points. At the same time, he's using Sprint to proc his Shadow Provocation. I think this thing is more viable late into the game. That's why I keep Shadow Provocation on buff activation and hit. But this is just min maxing what you have. Another one is his Lacrima. And he has some crazy things on his Lacrima, and I don't want you guys to have like questions, more questions, because there is probably already a lot of questions. But he's doing a pre maximized, build, uh, maximized build with crit hit disabled, right? However, he is using a weapon that amplifies his attack damage by attack critical damage. And this is basically the best unique two-hander you can have on your um, maximize build. So, but in order for this to work, you need to have a little bit of critical rate, critical damage, which can be confusing. And he probably has that crit on his charms. Yeah, he has a few charms with critical damage. But this weapon is so good that it's actually worth to pick up a little bit of critical damage on your maximize build in order to make this weapon work. Of course, it has some ancient pilgrims for sanctum effect. Sanctum effect is just buffs on the maps like swiftness, enhancement, and so on. And it has Caprice Hut for max energies because on cold build you can you can do cold energies because those increases your maximize damage. And at the same time, Caprice is really nice because it gives you up to 35% damage on every hit. So it's basically additional 35% damage jump. That would be... And of course, he's using... Um, but I talked about that. He's using a Enhanced Potion Effect Belt. Because right now, it's really easy to get potions. And with that many Enhanced Potion Effects, your Hair Damage el Elixir can have up to like 50% amp. I feel, I've seen some people even having like 100% amp on the potion, which is crazy. And of course, he has some insane unique items like Preservation of Reason, which is Biz Helmet and Slot, Gloves Best in Slot, Hamal Verdances, which came out in Season 5. And he's using Hero Charm, but he's using Hero Charm because he has Caprice Hat in his uh, Lacrima. So... You can do a lot with the build, but it highly depends on what you have in your pockets. And he's running Grey Robber Skin Golden Ring just for insane amount of gold gain. Cause enchanting costs gold and quite a bit of gold right now. And it looks like he switched to Gadina Access for item drop rarity. But when you do 2.9 trillion damage, you can definitely switch to Gadina Access to pick up some item drop rarity. And you're not gonna even feel any difference on the map. You're not gonna do any maps lower, and you definitely not have to do the level lower level maps. But yeah, this is basically I don't know how much is achievable. I never achieved even close to this, and uh, I I tried to grind quite a bit. But I think I needed to talk about this one so people would understand, and stop following big boys, and then just not making the build work. And it would be the same in here, on the Zodiacs. He, he's making some of the choices that you just can't make early into the game. For example, he's running additional... He's running uh, additional call damage and additional call damage amplification 
just because he is not running lightning damage because he doesn't need it he has Akiban Thunderbolt so he's just looking for more damage to pick up and he's getting Path of Swiftness for Dexterity Amp, Strength for Damage Amp on Strength, Power of Harmony, just because he has really huge stats. If you check out his orbs, his orbs are all 70s, 80s. There is not a single 60 orb, so yeah, this is just a big grinder. Remember that, guys. So in this one, this is basically everything I wanted to say at the same time. I'm doing Frost Strike build, but I really didn't want to do Frost Strike build, but there is no other way in this season to achieve high level maps, especially if you don't have that much time to grind. So if you want to check what I'm doing on my Frost Strike build, I keep uploading my Zero to Hard Map series. There is plenty of episodes of that, but yeah. Thanks for watching, GG's, and see you in the next one.